Today I want to share with you a process that has helped me to take my watercolour paintings to the next level. Before I start many of my paintings, I like to take some time to do some studies. I'll often do a graphite study and I'll play around with the colours I'm going to use on a colour study. In this video, I'll show you how I use this process to create this painting of two cockatoos. Not only will you see where my inspiration came from for this painting, but I'll also share with you what I did to overcome a problem that happened during the painting process. It's great to be back. I'll be showing you the process of how I painted these cockatoos. And as always, I'll be sharing my techniques and tips to help you improve your own watercolor paintings. If you're new here, make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my content. And if you enjoy the video, please give it a like to support my channel. Now let's dive into the story of how this painting came about. I came out to my studio pretty early most mornings. One morning in January, I came down here and before I started working, I decided to water the plants in the garden. While I was doing that, a cocky landed on the roof of the studio behind me. I had my phone in my pocket, so I quickly took some video of him before he flew away. I kept watering, but he didn't seem to want to go away. He just sat there and watched me. I noticed that he kept glancing over towards the bird bath though. So I realized he was wanting a drink and I was in his way. So I turned the hose off and I came back inside the studio and I grabbed my camera. I went back outside and I stood away from the bird bath so that he could come down and have a drink. I noticed his mate was in the tree behind him waiting as well. After a little while, he flew down onto the grass and he wandered through the garden to the bird bath. He had a quick drink and then he hopped down. Instead of flying away, he wanted to have a look around. He walked over to the sliding glass door and started admiring his reflection, as you do. He and his mate stayed for a while and eventually they flew off. I had intended to paint a gardenia that day, but they changed my mind. I ended up using two of the photos that I took that morning as reference for this painting. I think it's the same bird in each photo, but the stance is different. Before I did the main painting, I did a quick graphite sketch, and I also made a detailed colour study. I made the graphite study for two reasons. The first was so that I could have a play with the background. These are white birds, and I felt that I needed some colour on the background to enhance them but I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, so the graphite allowed me to play around with that. I could remove areas that I didn't like and add more graphite if I needed to. The second reason I did the graphite sketch was because I wasn't sure how much feather detail I wanted to include. By using graphite, I could draw it on and then erase it and play around with it until I was happy with it. After that, I did the colour study. With this painting, I was able to play around with colour. I could experiment with the background and try different things. I wanted to try and get some movement through the painting, so I was able to use the background splash of colour to do that. I struggled with the crest on this one, so I was conscious of that when I painted the main painting, and I simplified that area. I mixed a muted violet and painted it in some of the shadow areas, but I found that it didn't really add to the painting, so I left that off when I did the main painting. And that meant that I could limit my colour palette even further, which was good. The graphite sketch and the study took me a day to do, but it was worth the time that I spent because the next day I started my main painting with confidence. I knew what I wanted it to look like. I could see what it was going to look like. And I was aware of the areas that could potentially give me trouble. Doing them allowed me to relax and enjoy the day painting. That's not to say, though, that the main painting went without a hitch. I had one major problem when I started the painting, and it has to do with masking fluid. I'm not a fan of masking fluid. I use it when I have no other choice, but if I can manage without it, I will. 
On this painting, I thought it would make the task of painting the background splash easier if I wasn't worried about getting paint on the edges of the cockatoo. So I went ahead and used an old flat brush and I painted in the edge of the birds before I started. Here's where I went wrong. After my background splash had dried, I started to remove the masking fluid and I discovered that it had left a stain on my paper. All the way around the edge of the cockatoos, I had this yellow border. It looked awful and I came really close to ripping the painting off my board and starting again. I should have known better. I tell all my patrons, always test your masking fluid out on the edge of your paper before you use it. Make sure it doesn't discolour the paper when you remove it and make sure it doesn't tear your paper. And that all went out the window with me. But I will show you what I did to correct the problem. I'm going to make a full length tutorial of this painting for Patreon. I'll post it later in the year when I get it finished. If you're eager to learn more about painting in watercolour, I've got over 150 tutorials on Patreon now, so there's plenty there to learn from. The paper I used for this painting was Fabriano Artistico Soft Press watercolour paper. The Windsor and Newton colours I used were French Ultramarine, Burnt Sienna and Transparent Yellow. I also had to get a bit of Daniel Smith's Buff Titanium out because I needed it for repair work. Okay, let's go to the start of the painting where I had just started wetting the background with some water. My masking fluid has dried and now I'm wetting the background with some water. I didn't want the water to go on the birds except for the crests up the top here. You can see I'm painting over the crests here. While everything was still wet, I got some transparent yellow on my mop brush and I started to wash that over the crest area. I wanted to leave some lost edges on the crest feathers, so I needed to wash the yellow all over that area loosely. This is where my colour study came in handy. I knew what it was going to look like, so I could paint it on quickly and confidently. I also tilted my board up to the top right corner so that the paint would drift up that way. There was some yellow on the feathers at the back of the cockatoo here, so I painted some of the transparent yellow there as well. I lifted the board to make the paint drift up there too. While everything was still wet, I mixed some grey, this is from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna, and I started to paint that on. The masking fluid along the edges of the birds, you can see it's allowed me to paint a bit quicker and freer. Just a shame that I had that problem with it after I removed it. Just here, I wanted a lost edge. So I kept the paint away from that area there. Rather than have a hard edge running all the way up the back of that cockatoo, I'll leave that lost edge there, which will break it up and make it look a bit more interesting. The background dried, I removed the masking fluid, and I was left with that yellow stain around the edge of the cockatoos. You can see it there. So to disguise it, I thought I'd wet the paper and I'll paint some of the grey paint on that I used on the background to see if that helped. It did help, but it wasn't enough. So then I thought, what if I get some of Daniel Smith's buff titanium out and paint that onto the birds here and there? Buff titanium is a similar colour to the stain that was on the paper, so I was hoping that this would work. The colour was pale, so it worked well on the white feathers. I was able to dab it on here and there and I was able to disguise the ugly yellow edge. It became part of the painting and you didn't notice it. I was relieved then and I knew that I didn't have to start over. I also continued to use the grey that I used on the background. I needed some black for the beak, so I mixed my own from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. I like to use freshly squeezed paint and a brush that is just only slightly damp, hardly any water in it. And that way I can get the colour really dark. So 
So I'm using thick, creamy pigment here with virtually no water in it. The beak on the left cockatoo has already got that grey wash from the background over the top of it. So I'm going to use that wash to show through in the lightest areas of the beak. So here I'm wetting the top beak with some water. And then I use that really thick black pigment that I mixed and I start to paint that on. I put it on in the darkest area first, which was the tip of the beak. And then as I move my way back, I'll start to leave some of the underwash showing through. The paper's wet, my brush is wet, but the paint is fairly dry. So it's sitting where I put it on the wet paper, but it's giving me those soft edges that I want. Here I've put a little bit of water into the paint mixture to make it not quite as dark. And that gives me that mottled textured look on the beak. When the top beak was dry, I wet the bottom beak with some water and I did the same thing here. I've mixed a small amount of water with that thick pigment there. But then I get a smaller brush and the dark, thick, sticky pigment and I paint that onto the darkest areas. The beak on this cockatoo didn't have that grey underwash on it, so I had to paint that on first. I waited until that layer of grey paint was dry and then I re-wet the top beak with some water. And then I used the black mixture again. I started where it was the darkest, which was the tip of the beak. And then this one had some lines up the middle of the beak that I wanted to paint on. Here's the reference photo where you can see them. So I started to run that darker black mixture over the top. I didn't really want a hard straight line right up the beak so I used my other brush damp with water and I softened the line a bit with it and then I painted another one right beside that one and then like the other beak I left some of that lighter grey underwear showing and I made sure the shape of it was correct When I painted the crest feathers on the study painting, I struggled a bit with it. It wasn't working the way I wanted it to and I laboured over that area. I was determined not to do that with this painting. The reference photo doesn't show a great deal of tonal variation on the crest feathers. So in order to make it look more interesting, I knew I had to change that. I didn't refer to the reference photo when I painted them in. Here's my reference photo and all I can see is a slight tonal variation on each feather, nothing really significant. And there's a bit more colour near the head, but that's about it. So with these feathers, I used transparent yellow to define some of the edges. I painted it on dry paper and then I got some water on my brush and I softened the edges gently. I tried to leave a few lost edges as well. Where the yellow was brighter near the head, I used transparent yellow at its full intensity. And then I started to use it elsewhere at its full intensity. Even though it wasn't dark like this on the reference photo, I knew I needed to draw more attention to this area. So I stopped looking at the reference photo and I just started to do my own thing here with the paint. I softened edges with my other brush, slightly damp with water. I put a bit more colour on this feather right at the front as well. 
Still using transparent yellow though. So I've got some lost edges there. I've got some soft yellow and I've got the yellow at its full intensity. Let's put a bit more on that one too. And I was quite happy with that then. Here I'm showing you this study that I painted. I'm working wet on wet and I'm using my grey mixture. And then I thought I'd mix a muted violet and I'd paint that onto the shadow areas for interest. This is a mix of Scarlet Lake and French Ultramarine. But when I'd finished the painting, I decided that I didn't really like it. It wasn't needed, so when I painted my main painting, I left that colour off. Back to the main painting here, I've just wet the body with some water. And here I've got the buff titanium. I paint that on again, as I said, to disguise the ugly edge that I've got. And then I start to paint on the grey over the top. I leave a bit of the buff titanium showing here and there. I deepened the colour slightly in the darkest areas. I added a bit more French ultramarine to my mixture. And I left the white of the paper showing too. I suggested some feather shapes. And before it dried, I came back and put even darker paint in those darkest areas. I let that dry and then I started to work on the wing area on the right hand side. To do that, I wet that wing area with water. I got a bit more of the grey paint. I deepened the colour slightly. And then I started to suggest some feather detail. I used a smaller brush here. This is a liner brush. As I said, I wet the paper first, but by the time I got down to this section here, it was only slightly damp. I suggested a little bit more feather detail up at the top of the wing there, but again I worked on the wet paper to keep the paint edges soft using the grey mixture. And at the back of the wing there I wet the paper again and I'm using a dark brown. For that I mixed a bit of French ultramarine into my burnt sienna. So rather than get another colour out, I made do with the colours I was already using. For the wing area here, I worked on wet paper again. So here I'm wetting it with some clean water. I get a bit of buff titanium on my brush and I paint that on here and there to try and disguise that dirty edge that I've got. And then I get the grey paint mixture again, which was French Ultramarine mixed with burnt sienna. And I start to suggest some feather shapes on the wet paper. I paint loosely because I don't want to get lost in the detail of the feathers. I waited until that area was dry and then I started to paint in some detail here. Still using the grey mixture, but as I said, the paper's dry. With this feather here, I'm painting the area around the feather to bring it out. And here I'm painting on the feather with the grey paint. I'm working on dry paper here because I wanted a definite hard edge. Where I want a soft edge, I quickly use my damp brush to soften it. Over here though, I thought I'd allow the paint to bleed over the wet paper, so I wet it with water first. And then I paint the grey paint along the edge of the feather and it bleeds over the wet paper. So I'm trying to create different edges, soft edges, hard edges, and even some broken edges here and there. I try as much as I can these days to not labour over my paintings as much as I used to. I used to try to get the paint to do what I wanted it to do. I had a fixed idea in my head and I'd battle with the paint to make it behave. 
now more and more I'm starting to accept what it gives me and I'm comfortable knowing that I can't always control it. Sometimes I've got to let go and enjoy those happy accidents that occur. I've just picked up a little bit more French ultramarine on my brush there. I used my mechanical pencil to add a little bit more detail around the eyes. I thought that would be simpler than trying to paint it in. And then I went back to this crest here and I added a bit more transparent yellow onto it, just in a few different areas. I also painted a shadow underneath the feet just to ground both of the cockatoos and then I was happy with it. I took the tape off from around the edges of the painting and then I cut it from the board. And there it is there finished. And you can see that lost edge on the back of the cockatoo there that I was talking about at the start. So that's two cockatoos that visited my garden. I don't always do studies, but when I do, I'm always glad that I took the time to do it. I really feel that my skills have progressed since I started doing them. If I'm super confident with the subject that I'm about to paint, I'll go straight in and start painting. But if I'm not sure, if I don't really know what to do with the background, or I'm not sure what colors I'm going to use, a study will always allow me to get to know my subject. And it allows me to begin painting the main painting with confidence. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next week. Should I do that with my hand or just nothing? To the next level. No, do I have to say hi everyone? Happy New Year. Just like that. I'm not going to say Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year. It's great to be back. And that was really our enthusiast. I went back outside and I stood away from the bird bath so that he could have a drink. But I found that I didn't really, uh, I really feel that my skills have prog progressed. Yeah.